Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Vivek Malik, and together with my colleague Kumar Vikramjit, we'll have a short discussion about a project that we recently open sourced. Next. Who are we? A couple of words about us. Uh, we are Adobe's security intelligence team, which is part of Adobe's security coordination center. The purpose of the team is to do data science research in security field. We mostly focus on reactive security, and that is basically identifying threats that cannot be detected by conventional ways. In other words, we use the logs and security data that we collect from Adobe's assets, and we try to find anomalies and the bad stuff. Uh, the part of uh, the members of this team are Andre Kotai, Eberi Boros, Kumar Vikramjit, and myself, Vivek Malik. Next. OSAS, or One Stop Anomaly Shop. This is a machine learning framework aimed to discover anomalies in a given data set. The open source project represents an implementation of several Adobe security intelligence teams, patterns, white papers, and other projects. The goal of OSAS is to make it as easy as possible to experiment with different data sets, algorithms, and feature combinations, and find the most balanced combination for your own use case as well as data. But most importantly, OSAS will try to answer why an anomaly is considered actually an anomaly. Uh, to better understand this, uh, let's really uh, talk fast about anomaly detection. Next. The anomaly detection principle. Uh, this principle is as simple as pi. Anomalies represent extremely rare events. But the more com complex question is how? There are some well-known algorithms for outlier detection, such as local outlier factor or the isolation forest, k-means and distance from the center of a cluster, error reconstruction, and so on. But sometimes these algorithms generate anomalies, uh, and our SOC or security experts don't understand why these are actually anomalies. And the simple answer, anomalies represent an extremely rare event um, that is not enough for them. So coming back to anomaly detection principle, let's look at the picture uh, in this slide and try to identify an anomaly. Everyone's first reaction would be the egg that is of a different color, uh, that is the brown egg, is an anomaly. And maybe you are right. But if you look close enough at the picture, all the eggs are wearing facial masks except maybe two or three. So maybe that's an anomaly that I'm actually looking for. The bottom line is the way you prepare your data is going to influence what kind of anomalies you generate. So the data preparation is fundamentally very important. Next. Now let us try to bring more context to our egg situation and briefly, briefly describe each one of them. So we see a couple of eggs appear to be in love. One is sneezing. One definitely has eye problems. Some are mad, some are scared, and so on. Now this is important because the fact that we have a brown egg is not the most exotic feature anymore. The sneezing egg becomes important. The egg that is crying is also unique and so on. In other words, what we propose is following. We'll describe each observation, eggs here in this case, with a set of labels, and then let anomaly detection algorithms decide which ones are actually the anomalies. And that way we generate labels becomes the entire magic. So you see in this uh, picture, uh, the egg, white, has mask, open eyes, and then needs eye surgery that becomes the outcome of an algorithm. Similarly, egg, white, has mask, open eyes, in love, or has maybe chicken pox. Looks surprised becomes the uh, outcome of our algorithm that we run. Another egg that is white, has mask, open eyes, but is an angry person. So probably that's the anomaly that we are looking for. So the, these are the labels that uh, we are trying to implement uh, with one stop anomaly show. Next. So let's talk about the tags or the label generators. We have three types of tags. I will start by saying that when we designed OSAS, we had in mind semi-structured log data. This type of data is usually found in access logs or error logs from Apache, Tomcat, in uh, Hubble and so on. Hubble, by the way, is another open source project from Adobe, but you can check it out. Uh, this information is semi-structured because you can infer attributes from it. For instance, 
while a partial log is X based, uh, you can extract timestamp, IP addresses, URL, response code, etc. Et One important aspect is that this data contains many attributes with unbound values. For instance, the IP addresses and URLs. Usually these attributes generate a large feature space. By comparison, the number of examples that can be contained in uh, a manageable data set and that can be processed by machine learning algorithms is relatively small. These two factors combined generate uh, something known as data sparsity, an unwanted effect that makes machine le learning algorithms overfit the training data and generalize poorly on previously unseen examples. To cope this or to cope with this, OSAS reduces the large feature space by employing a tagging strategy on the raw data set. This is done before feeding the data to anomaly detection or classification algorithm. The tagging strategy uses predefined recipes for uh, specific field types. Now this is based on uh, three type of uh, tagging strategies that we use, the standard tags, the text tags, and the expert knowledge. Uh, next. Uh, there are five types of label generators under each tagging strategy uh, combined, and uh, we are going to go through each of these uh, separately. So let's take a look at the multinomial field. Uh, the tags provided by these fields is uh, checked for the data that counts like in detection algorithms. Uh, it counts for unique attribute values, and usually there are less than 10% unique attribute values. The kind of uh, models that you can run on the multinomial fields is are the stat statistical distribution values or label based value frequency and special tags for any unseen data. Uh, under numerical fields, um, usually you can count for unique attribute values and more than 10% of unique values are available in uh, numerical fields. All values should be numerical or there should be none. Uh, the type of models that can uh, run are like standard deviation, mean, median, uh, label based Gaussian probability. Finally, field, comb field combiners. Um, the detection mechanism uses all multinomial fields that can be combined together. Uh, the models that are executed on uh, field combiners is statistical distribution of values and the label based uh, frequency on special tags for the unseen data. Next. Uh, text field. The type of detection is non numerical. Uh, you can only count unique attribute values and more than 10% of unique values are available. Uh, you can compute the algorithm such as n-gram language model, uh, compute perplexity of each example, mean or standard deviation, and then label based on Gaussian probability. Finally, expert knowledge. Uh, the detection is manual in this case, and the models that you run are uh, keyword or reject, reject based. Uh, the labels are generated for matched instances. Next. The anomaly detection algorithms. By default, OSAS has four anomaly detection algorithms. The isolation forest, local outlier factor, SVD, based uh, um, anomaly detector, or the statistical n-gram. The first three are specific to scikit-learn, and if you want to know more about how they work, we suggest you consult official documentation and the papers associated with it. The statistical n-gram method is an algorithm designed by us. It uses statistics to compute the probability of observing combination of tags and computes the anomaly score using some of some over what is known as the negative log likelihood. Next. In a nutshell, the pipeline contains three main modules. On the left side, we have the data acquisition mode, which uses a security uh, incident event monitoring uh, for runtime and statistically uh, compiled data for training. The middle section is called the labeling or data grooming module, and it applies labels for each interesting attribute type. Finally, the right section is the scoring module, which uses one of the three strategies to assign scores to examples. The three scoring strategies are get tagged label data, compute uh, supervised and unsupervised scoring models, and generate a supervised risk based anomaly search for your scene. During training, we use statistic data sets to compute 
uh, static data sets to compute statistics and language models for the attributes labels, label the data set and compute the model for three scoring strategies. At runtime, we just apply all three elements of the pipeline using pre-computed models and generate a score for each individual example previously unseen in the data set. Next. Now I'll let Kumar take over. Thank you, Vivek. So I'll, I'm Kumar here. I'll go through the demo. So in this demo, we'll cover three important aspects of OSS. First, we'll look into how to get it up and running. Next, we'll run OSS with uh, default configuration. And after that, we'll customize OSS with expert knowledge. And we'll compare how the behavior changes and uh, how the improvements impact OSS results. So let's get OSS, OSS up and running. So in the Git page, we can get all the links to get started with. So the Git page has a quick start guide. There are basically two ways to install OSS. You can either download a pre-compiled image, which is the easier way to get it up and running. And alternatively, you can also uh, build the image locally. And another way can be to just work on the Git repo and make changes as per your need. So next uh, we'll go to the folder where our data set is stored. So in this folder, we see there is a CSV file, which is our default data set we are going to use for this demo. So this data set has around 5,000 5, events. And uh, we have also inserted some of the malicious events which we want to detect as anomalies, which is our end goal. So we can start with pulling the Docker image. And uh, then we'll run Docker run command. So in this command, we are specifying two ports. So the first port is for exposing OSS web service. The second port is for exposing Elasticsearch, Kibana, front end. The last argument you see where we are exposing the local folder to OSOS so that it can access the de default data set that we are using. So once we run it, uh, it will uh, it will initiate the two web service that uh, is basically the front end and back end of OSS. So we'll go to the console link. Oh, we are opening both Kibana and the console link. So once we go to the console, oh, we can see whether the the our test data set is present or not. So we also provide three other OSS endpoints which are not mentioned in the readme file, but it can be used. So the console basically provides command line interaction with OSS. Using the automated pipeline, you can run the entire workflow. And using the generate config endpoint, you can generate the config. So in the run full process, you can run the entire process without any intervention. In generate config, you can generate the config by just using the web interface. Let's go to the dashboard. So this is a default installation of uh, Kibana dashboard. So you can go to the dashboard link. Here you'll see there are like five dashboard links you can customize as per your need. Here you'll give you'll get all the stats related to your anomalies. Next. So how what what are the steps involved in building the test pipeline? So basically there are three steps. First, you generate a config file by executing auto config script. So here we will execute auto config script and it will have input as the data set and the config file that you want to generate. So this config file is basically a set of configurations for label generator and the anomaly detection algorithm that you want to use. It, 
it contains all the uh, label generators that the model will be using. And uh, once you execute it, it will also contain the parameters that it needs to uh, ex execute to contain to generate the model. So after this, you have to train the pipeline and train pipeline use the last config file that we generated. And the last step is to just run the pipeline, which will take as input the model file uh, and the input file that uh, that is our default data set. So we'll look, we'll look into it uh, in depth once we start working with the data set. So these uh, endpoints are not mentioned in the readme, but you can access it. So these are still in work in progress, but uh, this will be fully built uh, once we are done with it. So next, let's, let's use a default data set and go through the OSS uh, execution. So first, we will use the console link to go through the entire process. So let's check whether the data set is there or not. So let's see. Our folder is apps folder inside the default data set is present. And next we'll go, we will proceed with uh, getting the config file. So we'll execute uh, auto config. and we'll pass the data set as the input data set. And we'll give it a default config uh, argument. So once it's done, uh, if you want if you want to edit, we can just go and edit it. So we can see that it's present there. So we can open it in a text editor and edit it as per our requirement. At the bottom, we can see that we are using statistical and gram anomaly detection as a scoring algorithm. Next, we can go forward with uh, training the pipeline by using this config file that we already generated. So this will generate the model file that we want to uh, run the pipeline on. So once it finishes, we will get the model file. There is a small typo. I'll just rerun it again. After this, we have to execute to run pipeline that will use the default model file that we just generated from the default configuration of OSS. So we'll pass the same input file and model file. We'll just need to specify the output file. That is the results file that we want to use. So once we are done with that, we can see the results in the Kibana dashboard. Now we'll go to the dashboard link and we'll see the results and stats related to the execution. So it's a default Kibana installation. So the username and password is just admin admin. And you can configure this front end as per your requirement. So in the dashboard, we can uh, see that there are around like 5,000 observations and we have used statistical and gram anomaly uh, scoring method 
and next we can see that there we can see the max score and min score that we got for the data set and uh, there are around like 43 unique labels and uh, next in the histogram panel we can see the score distribution of all the observations so most of the observations are centered around 0 to 1000 and then there are small humps where we can see like lesser number of events and there are other panels that we can explore we can see the various 10 labels that got generated and also top 10 labels at the bottom uh, there is a panel for the top 10 anomalies uh, it shows the tag sets and the scores that it generated. So labels or tags are specifically important uh, if you want to see why that event is anomalous. So next we go to the discover link where we can see individual events which were characterized as anomalous. Here we can add a filter. So say we want to see all the events that generated the score greater than 1000. So we can just um, create a filter for that. And uh, we want to select to uh, score and uh, command fields. And next we'll sort the score by descending order so that we get the max score at the top. So these are the most anomalous events or commands that are seen in the data set. And we can go through and analyze them. So this was a default configuration and we can see that there are a lot many anomalies which might not be malicious in nature specifically. So we can go uh, investigate it. Next we'll look into how to enhance the process and how we can improve the detection process. So in this uh, anomaly set, uh, we'll see a netcat command. So the netcat command that we are seeing here, so this netcat command is the command that we have inserted uh, in the data set. And uh, it looks like it is pretty, it has a, it is anomalous, but it lies pretty low in that score. So we'll see how we can improve the detection process in the next step. So next we will add some expert knowledge, which is security based, and uh, we'll improve our labeling by using that uh, knowledge base. So we can run the entire process using the console or we can just use the web interface. Let's go through the web interface here. So here, first of all, we can just generate uh, default configuration just like we did last time. We'll submit it. Once we submit it, we will be presented by the default uh, configuration. We can then go again. We can confirm the configuration. Here we'll get an option to change it once we submit. So here we are getting the option to change uh, the config as per requirement. So we have used statistical n-gram anomaly and we have other four that we can choose from. Uh, we'll choose least outlier factor here, sorry, local outlier factor. And uh, then we'll remove some of the label generators as we don't feel that, that those fields are adding any uh, value to the anomaly detection process. So yeah, we are just removing some of the label generators and the fields that can just be random and it's not uh, useful for score generation. So next uh, we will look into how we can add the uh, knowledge based labeling. So we'll use generator type keyword based and uh, we want to add our knowledge based keyword for commands so we'll change the field name to command and uh, we need to change the keyword list that uh, that we have selected 
So I'll just copy paste here. And this this is the list of uh, uh, command keywords that we come up with by using our uh, by by doing our security research. So we can use uh, we can just add keywords or we can add uh, regex based keyword that you see in the next example. So this is an example where we are just using regex based uh, labeling. It can be IP address or it can be paths. So. Yeah, so once we are done with that, we'll just save it. And we can see the file name is named as a tailored underscore the previous file name. Next we'll go to console and then we'll repeat the whole process. First we'll check the config file that we just generated that is tailored underscore on uh, the previous file name. Next uh, we'll train the pipeline using the new config file. We will supply the same input file which we have been using. And uh, We will provide the new config file and we'll just let it execute. Yeah, we also need to specify the model file that we are uh, gonna generate from this train pipeline process. So it will generate the model file which we will use to run the pipeline just like the previous process. So once we have the model file generated, so it's a good idea to have a model file which is named differently than the previous step so that you can repeat the whole process as many times as you want. Next, uh, we'll run the pipeline using the same input file. You can change the input file to complete a new file to test it to, with respect to the model file that we have generated in this step. Or you can just use the same input file, depends on uh, your requirement. So once this is done, we'll again go to the dashboard and uh, check out the results. So again, I'll copy the dashboard link. And in the Kibana front end, we'll go and observe, does it cause any significant changes in the anomalies? So this time we have used local outlier factor uh, anomaly scoring method. And uh, we'll see the score range has changed a lot and we have generated around 125 unique labels that is three times last time. And the score range is also uh, very huge. And if you see the histogram score distribution, we see that most of the scores are located near zero. And after that, there are very few uh, events that have very high scores. So it looks like it did very, uh, good clustering of the anomalies and we are not uh, getting anomalies that have like very high score. Uh, next we can look at look at the real stain labels. So these labels got generated uh, because of the keyword based labels that keyword based label generated we have used. So you can see that they are named command underscore keyword uh, and there is a command which we have put uh, as a uh, as a label generated keyword. You can also see top 10 labels here. And same as last time, you can look at the top score anomalies labels and scores generated by them. We'll again go to the discover link. And uh, check out the scores again. So we'll use the same filter and then we'll choose score and command and labels. If we sort the score to descending order, 
we'll see that the netcat command that we have observed in the last uh, iteration, it is appearing uh, to have the highest score. And then there are other uh, commands that we have inserted that also have a higher score. So they appear to have the, so these are the inserted malicious commands that uh, that we injected in the data set. And uh, it's very, very, very relevant to the security investigation that someone might be doing. So we can use OSS in IDS logs or web service logs. It's, it has a very uh, open implementation. So as we have seen that OSS is very easy to deploy, given its integration with uh, Kibana and Docker, it's very easy to use. And you can repeat the whole experimentation process many times by changing the configuration file uh, and adding expert knowledge as per your requirement. So in general, as, as with any ML approach, you have to test the features which will add real value to your ML process. And you have to uh, test out all the ML all the anomaly algorithms as per your requirements and see which will give you better results. Next, we'll go forward with the questions. So this is the GitHub link where you can go and uh, fork the project. Uh, please feel free to try it. And if you like the project, please start the project. Also, you can get more details about the project in this Medium link. Uh, there are other Adobe related resources where you can go and check out Adobe projects. Uh, thank you. Hope this was informative to you and please feel free to reach if you have any questions. Thank you.